It's Christmas. Well, it's not really Christmas, but to a gardener it sure feels like Christmas when you get these in the mail. I just got two packages of seeds. One from the Ontario Rock Garden and Hardy Plant Society, and another one from NARGS, the North American Rock Garden Society. Together there's about 95 different species of plants here, and I'm ready to get going growing them. I also have a whole bunch of seeds from last year that I've collected from various gardens and my own garden, and I want to germinate those as well. But I have a problem. How do I germinate these seeds? Do they need scarification? Do they need warm, cold treatments? What do I do with all these seeds? In this video, I'm going to walk you through my process to figure out what I'm going to do with each one of these seeds. You've got all your seeds. Now you have to figure out what to do with them. These seeds here come from the Ontario Rock Garden and Hardy Plant Society. And the nice thing about these is that they put a code on the corner for germination. So each label, the top right hand corner, has a little code that tells you exactly how to germinate them. So I pulled out a few examples here. Uh, this one here is the Fedra Monosperma, and it has a code of A2. Now the A tells me that it's a warm germinator, and uh, by warm I mean room temperature is all you need. You don't need to chill this down in any way. The 2 tells me that it likes darkness to germinate. So if you have it in a pot in, uh, say, your normal home, it's going to get light, and the seed may not germinate that way. So in that case you have to cover it up and keep it dark. If you use my baggie method, then you can just put the baggies in a drawer somewhere and germinate them that way. This one here is a clematis. It has a code of C9. So C tells you that it needs a three month warm, three month cold period. After that cold period, you bring the seeds back into room temperature and they should germinate. It also has a code 9 which tells you to remove the tails on these seeds. Clematis have these little furry fuzzy tails on them, very much like a dandelion seed. And uh, people used to think that it was important to cut those off, otherwise they inhibit germination. But we now know that's not really true. Now I tend to still cut them off because it's a little easier to handle the seed, but you don't need to do that. If you're interested in germinating clematis seed, have a look at my website, GardenMyths.com. I did a whole article testing different germination procedures for clematis. Here's another seed. It has a code of A67. So again, the A is a warm germinator, so we'll germinate these at room temperature. The 6 tells you they should be scarified. That means you need to nick the seed. This seed probably has a very tough outer coating, and if you don't nick it or damage it in some way, it will be much slower in germination. And I have a separate video to show you how to do various types of scarification. The other code on here is a 7, which tells you to soak the seed. So that works great for these seeds, because they're all marked. But these other seeds from NARGS, they don't have a germination code on them. They just have the name of the plant and some information about where the seed came from. And that's also true of all your own collected seed. I mean, you, you know, you've made your own envelopes there. You don't know how to germinate these either. So for most of the seed you end up with, you don't really have good germination information. So what do you do? Well, I take these and I look them up on the germination guide provided by the Ontario Rock Garden Society. I trust this guide and it's the best guide on the internet. So if I can find this species of plant on this guide, I follow their procedure. In fact, I'll use the same codes and I just write them on the envelope here so I know how to germinate them. If you can't find this seed on this list, then my second list is Dr. Dino's list. And Dr. Dino was a professor who did a lot of research on germinating seeds. His books have thousands of seeds in them. He tried different germination procedures to see which ones work. And there's lots of information available. 
you can get free copies of that book from my website, GardenMets.com. Now, sometimes you'll have an odd seed and it's not on either of those lists. Then what do you do? Well, I kind of follow two options. I, I either try germinating them warm. The reason for that is that most seed germinates warm. So out of all of these seeds, probably 60, 65 percent of them are warm germinators. So if I try warm germination, there's a good chance that will work. The other option is I try a cold warm cycle. A lot of these seeds go through a winter period and in nature they get a cold period before they get warm. So I'll give them three months cold and then three months warm and see if that works. So now I know how to germinate them and I know how to process the seeds. My favorite method is one of two. I either use the baggie method or I use my method for small seeds. And I have videos on both of those methods and I'll provide links at the end of this video. Any seed that is a fair size, that's not dust-like, I will use the baggie method. It's the easiest method. I can store a lot of different kinds of seeds in a small space. It's very easy to see the seed to see if they've germinated. I can move them from my fridge to the room and back again so cycling is very easy. Trying to do that with a hundred pots is a nightmare. Uh, doing them in baggies works really well. But some seed, like this one, you won't be able to see this in the camera, but this seed is dust-like. It's extremely small. I either do them in the baggie method and that method works, or I direct sow on into a pot. And it really depends on how easy I think the seed is to germinate. If it's fairly easy, like this is a Campanula, most of them germinate quite easily. It's a warm germinator, so I expect in a few weeks it will germinate. I'll do that in a pot. If I think it's going to be difficult to germinate, I probably will go with the baggy method because then I can give it various warm cold cycles much easier than pots. If I take this and put it in a pot and it hasn't germinated by June, it'll be outside and I can guarantee it'll dry up. And once they dry up, it pretty much kills the seed. The other thing I like to do is, when I have a lot of seeds like this, is I prioritize the order in which I process them. So I'll go through this and I will pull out all the seeds that are short-lived. And you'll know that by the code because it will tell you so right away. That tells you it's a short-lived seed. I pull those out and I process them right away. You want to get those moist and get the germination process started because those seeds are already dying. And in fact, some of these seeds won't germinate because the seeds are already dead. It's taken too long to get them from the person who grew them to my house and it's now the middle of January. After that I usually process the ones that take a little longer to process so seeds that need to be soaked for a week I'll do that. Anything that needs a cold warm cycle I get them in the cold as quickly as possible. A cold cycle is usually three months so we're looking at January, February, March. In March I pull them back out in the warm so they might germinate in April and May, and that's just the perfect time. If I wait until April to do the cold treatment, they won't germinate until July, and then it's just too late for them to grow any size before winter comes. The last seeds I process are usually the warm germinators, because they usually germinate fairly quickly. But I like to get all of these processed as soon as possible, so I'll do those over the next couple days. Depending on the type of seed you get, you can pick easier germinating seeds or more difficult ones. I'm not growing a lot of things that are more difficult, but out of these hundred seeds here, I expect to germinate about 65 to 70 percent of them within the first year. And out of those, I will end up with somewhere in the order of 50 to 60 different plants. I always lose a few plants in the process, so things might germinate but not grow well and they die. So you can expect about a 50% success rate. Now if you pick easy to germinate seeds, you know, you do a lot of vegetables for instance, you got pretty much a 100% chance of success. 
All right, so you've gone through all of this germination process. You're six months ahead, and the seed still hasn't germinated. What do you do then? Well, I start going through warm-cold cycles. What I like to do is I like to have my seeds germinate somewhere between January and July because then they can grow into strong seedlings before winter comes. If they haven't germinated by around the middle of June, I take the seeds and put them in the cold and I store them cold until next January and then I pull them out of the cold and hope that works. I just germinate some Halicia seeds and they've been going through this warm cold cycle now since 2014, it's now 2019, so basically a five year period of cold warm, cold warm, and I just found the first two seeds that germinated. Now that's very unusual. I don't want to scare you off. Most of these seeds will germinate within a couple months.